in the primary of begin brackets aware of the body posture rising and falling of the abdomen one if the vibration tingling sensation arises should we watch it till it's passing away or ignore it and bring back the attention to rising and falling of abdomen on the two yeah we'll we'll start from that so basically the idea is uh, rising and falling becomes the primary object so we are developing necessary qualities for skills using that say for example if you are practicing mindfulness of breathing assume that you are using that as a primary object so again and again returning to that and we are developing mindfulness concentration using that so similarly if you are using rising and falling so that becomes the primary object and again and again we are using that to develop the necessary skills now say for example uh, you are now gain the necessary skills say you are consistent in your practice and you are able to maintain your practice and uh, now a series of rising and fallings you can continuously watch and there are no much distractions and the information or whatever the details available to each and every rising and falling is fairly visible and you are very much like uh, familiar with the process now fairly seasoned and then on such occasion actually the point is better look at rising and falling uh, more closely to recognize how it is beginning how the changes happen how the end happen what happens between the end of the rising and the beginning of the falling uh, then closely examine the beginning of the falling then the middle the end and then what happened between the end of the uh, falling and the beginning of the rising so the complete cycle as we do in the anapanasati same way we do the observation in rising and falling also now this may further enhance to give you more details like it is not a single rising it may be series of little little risings minute risings maybe not a single falling it may consist of series of uh, minute fallings so that is possible when you are clearly seeing it clearly comprehending it so we have added not only mindfulness now we have clear comprehension into the picture so you are closely examining so you can recognize all these subtle details now in case uh, rising and falling fairly fades away disappear and on the other hand if there are any other sensations available then you can go to one of those prominent sensation and start watching it and suppose that also disappear and there is no any particular significant sensation but now rising and falling has again available then you can return back to rising and falling so we keep rising and falling as the kind of a refuge as the primary object where we can again and again return to it sharpen our faculties and then uh, again we can go to other sensations and uh, start watching it <clears throat> so uh, very similar to anapana sati so anapana sati uh, but uh, has the capacity to go with uh, samatha and vipassana both but rising and falling has particularly the ability or direction towards the vipassana particularly to the dhatu manasika to the elements meditation so and therefore immediately switching to some other sensation would be uh, would may have certain uh, drawbacks because assume that you true that various other sensations are available but uh, before you develop fair amount of mindfulness before you develop fair amount of uh, concentration then jumping to the con- uh, other sensations would further distract you so because at this stage you are simply developing a fair amount of concentration you are developing the focus attention how to consistently keep our attention on a particular object so that that ability that skill has to be first developed and after once you are confident okay i can maintain my attention for a long time now and i can properly aim my attention to any any place then actually you are capable then you can actually switch to other sensations so therefore don't uh, be in a rush to jump to other sensations develop your or sharpen your faculties using rising and falling for some time and when they are available those faculties are fairly sharpened then you can switch to other sensations yeah. the part 2 of this question bante 
Similarly, for pain feeling, uh, can I adjust the body posture to relieve the pain or should we patiently spend some time to watch the pain to a certain extent? Thank you. Yeah, both possible. Actually, don't immediately change your posture. You, I mean, the uh, <clears throat> thing is, uh, you can maintain some time further uh, without immediately changing the posture. So this way only we are further stretching ourselves in a way we are enhancing or prolonging the, the ability to maintain the same posture. But it doesn't mean that we are lot of, with a lot of effort, with a lot of patience, say, even when the uh, pain is extremely burning that we are not supposed to change the posture, then we are going to certain extent, certain extreme. So rather than doing that, you can assume that there is a pain in your but wherever place, and uh, but it's bearable. Then you can be, you can simply further continue your practice, probably without paying much attention to the pain. Suppose you are practicing anapanasati, but there is a little pain available in your knee, but don't jump to that pain. But you continue with anapanasati. But as you further continue, assume this pain has become unbearable. Then probably few options are there. Actually, one option is you can maintain your attention further with anapanasati, but with, in the background you can change the posture so that it is the, whatever you are doing is not being much affected so because you are maintaining your attention with anapanasati. You haven't shifted your attention. Because the point is, I mean, these things are quite... Uh, uh, normal for our beginning of the practice because even if we shift to something else, our mind gets distracted. And even a little sound, our mind gets distracted. Even a little thought, mind gets distracted. So it's very vulnerable at the beginning. That's why changing your attention to the pain might cause you to get distracted. So you can maintain your attention on the breathing. But since it is now unbearable pain, probably you can change your posture in the background. In a, without much making any disturbance, say you are changing it, but still you are focusing on this anapanasati, mindfulness of breathing. Another option is, say while you observe it, now there is an unbearable pain, okay, now you shift your attention to the pain. You can shift your attention to pain and see the pain is available, but pain is now your sort of uh, primary object, but we can't say it's really the primary object, your object of attention and while you are keeping your attention there now you can change the posture mindfully without I mean slowly you can change the posture but you can recognize okay the pain is now reducing whatever you feel comfortable but your attention is on pain now it has gone it has disappeared calm down then you can shift back to anapanasati so so the second method may be better in a way so as you move forward because now shifting your attention to a different object does not distract you and you even the mindfulness can include that so the so mindfulness is unbroken mindfulness is available even though the object has changed so you have continuity in the mindfulness but the object has changed and assume that you are a fairly seasoned practitioner so you can place your attention to any place then make use of all these. I mean, no need to strictly be with the anapanasati. You can recognize it, more detail of that. Then if there is a pain, you can shift your attention. So you are very much like making use of many objects possible. But uh, if you are prefer, you actually you can go directly with anapanasati also. Actually, there are many options available for us. So whatever convenient, whatever you feel is more convenient to you, you are free to use. Thank you, Bhante. <clears throat> Dear Bhante, this is the second question. Dear Bhante, I meditate using the breathing method when doing sitting meditation. I would simply inhale and exhale. If I had a thought, I would recognize it and move it back to inhaling and exhaling. However, I have noticed myself getting frustrated when I come across these distractions sound plus thoughts. For example, I would inhale, exhale, uh, get thought, plus inhale, thought, 
ஒர்க்ஸ்ட்ராக்டட் so because it's long time ago i started trying to time participate in several retreats but couldn't maintain it so after become a monk tried hard and uh, when the, at the beginning i couldn't even keep my mind even a even a second on a particular object so very difficult and uh, so much of distraction so much of thinking so much of planning so much of past incidents so many many distractions were there unbelievable <laughs> so that is where we start basically particularly if you are with uh, handling so many uh, say responsibilities and so many other family events and this and that so very difficult then you are coming to meditate and still you are carrying all that load of information load of events to your mind so reducing it to the simple breathing very difficult so this is the, this is the reality that we need to understand we need to accept but without giving up we can we have to again and again pay attention and uh, walking is in a way a very good solution for us because you know sitting uh, sitting uh, would be sometimes very difficult because as we already discussed pains are there aches are there and we feel uh, fall asleep that is also there and uh, what we have to observe is also quite boring so falling asleep is another problem but walking on the other hand is quite dynamic and while walking actually you can select the outside environment if necessary so that uh, you can see at least you know particularly if you are walking in a natural environment so that also has some healing effect it does not agitate your mind rather even you can simply watch it and have a little bit of relaxation uh, so likewise certain benefits are there even if if you are using the natural environment and again while walking don't think much about the thinking so our as we even yesterday discussed so it is not that we are trying to immediately suppress thinking or stop thinking rather our aim is to pay much attention on what we experience say say while the mind is in, involved in thinking our leg touches the foot so it is a certain a gross sensation that we experience so make it as a reminder to your mind to come back there stay there so kind of a reminder kind of invitation to your mind to okay associate this instead of thinking instead of too much uh, going on this obsessive thinking so again assume that uh, once you touch it as you have clearly explained in this uh, report say it is touch it is there but again the thought come obvious another thought come many thoughts come but next time again the next foot touches the ground so that's the thing so you are walking so next foot is touching the ground again a gross sensation available at your foot so make it another reminder to your thinking to your mind okay come and stay here so you are inviting it to come and stay here so the point is now this whatever the story going on in your mind will be interrupted time to time assume that uh, from this end to the other end say assume that there are 20 steps but only you could uh, successful on only say seven steps that indicate at seven points you have interrupted the inner chatter so now it's a matter of furthering it enhancing it now assume you are enhancing it to eight steps nine step 10 steps so likewise as we are gathering the momentum so the the inner chatter the this this thinking become weaker and weaker because we are interrupting it we are not promoting it but we are promoting the body awareness being with ourselves so ultimately there will be more and more attention being drawn to us to the body and the thinking process become weaker and weaker and even if you get distracted that distracted time become less and less 
So you, I mean, these are little measurements actually you can use to assess your progress. So at the beginning, you don't know when are you being distracted. You are completely lost and you are thinking some story going on. Later on, you understood, okay, I should come here. So you have spent, say, 10 minutes completely distracted, completely in a kind of a fantasy. Later, you understood, okay, I'm on the path and I have to come back. So you even worry, you're adding some more defilements to the picture. So many issues are there. But later, as we progress, you understand, okay, yes, I have distracted, but I didn't spend 10 minutes. Okay, I was there for five minutes. After five minutes, you get the call. Okay, I have to be here. Then after some further practice, within three minutes, you may get the call. After one minute, you may get the call. So likewise, so this distracted period becomes less and less, shorter and shorter. The time you be with yourself, whatever the selected object, say you are, that is your touch sensation or breathing or rising and falling, your primary object. So the association of that become longer and longer. There may be a time ultimately, even the distraction you can recognize, knowingly that you get distracted. You can't say then it's a distraction actually say a prominent event happened, a sound happened. So of course it will take your attention, get your attention and then you, the mind which was on breathing now shifted to this. So the shifting also you can recognize. Knowingly you get shifted and you can even stay there in the sound now. And while observing that sound, if you like, you can see even the breathing. So now everything is included to the mindful picture, say in the mindful space. The mindfulness is available now. It has broadened now. Not only breathing, you can even recognize, okay, the sound is also there. You can recognize that and include that. And if, if necessary, now you can return back to breathing also. Now you are including the whole thing. So concentration, yes, a little bit uh, disturbed. But mindfulness is not. Mindfulness is available continuously, even though the object has changed. So you can use unto these tools to understand what's really going on, to assess your progress. So don't uh, discourage thinking, I mean, this is impossible, or I'm not pitri here to occur or something. <laughs> so don't worry about those. So you can continue your practice. Definitely, you, you can uh, tame the mind. Yeah. Thank you. This is the question number three. Venerable Bhante, my meditation posture is sitting meditation. Object of meditation is metta, loving kindness meditation. During a good meditation session, I experienced my mind was effectively concentrating on the meditation verse. Within brackets, bhavana vakya. I think what it means is the object. Within brackets, kamataham. Uh, then eventually I experienced a great deal of drowsiness. This was so intense and was similar to the state of mind prior to falling asleep in the night. However, I was able to gather the concentration again. I was still unsure if I was awake. However, at this stage, I experienced a sense of very bright light around me and noticed the mind. Sorry. I experienced a sense of very bright light around me and noticed the mind being fully concentrated on the meditation verse. It was very clearly and repetitively coming up without stopping. My mind and body was fully relaxed. There was a great deal of happiness. At this stage, I could still hear sounds around me. Other thoughts were also coming to mind. But I could get back to the deep concentration and happiness spontaneously. Then I had a thought, could this be a jhana? And eventually this thought covered my entire mind. My questions are, one, if the state of mind I experienced the first jhana or somewhat closer to that, if it is not a jhana, will the practice I do as above is directing me to the right way. If not, what advice should I receive? If this is a jhana, please explain per, further. Uh, sorry. If this is a jhana, please explain further 
how to establish it and progress from where I am. Thiruvan Sarana. Yeah, actually, uh, typically we uh, use mindfulness of breathing or any other kind of pasana related satipatthana related uh, objects as our primary object. Hmm? But uh, anyway, uh, so that is what we emphasize in the retreat. So anyway, I can simply give you an answer. So you can use metta as a preliminary preparation. and uh, But again, there is a possibility to use even uh, metta to attain jhana and you can emerge from it and then you can even uh, uh, change it to vipassana. That those are many possibilities are there, as you know, that Buddha has taught us many many uh, meditation exercises or meditation objects. So many possibilities are there. But in the retreat, typically we give more emphasis on the Satipatthana. So Metta is actually a, a Samatha meditation. We start with uh, maybe hours. So we direct our attention to ourselves and we wishing, uh, may I be well, may I be happy, may I be free from suffering, such kind of a phrase, a verse. And uh, we are gathering fair amount of attention, uh, concentration, and then you can direct your concentration to someone else. And uh, you can, typically we select a person that we respect and of the same sex. And uh, we honestly wish love or wish uh, kind of uh, well-being to that person and again and again, again and again. So we are using that phrase again and again, we are using that phrase. And accordingly, you that that person is uh, really pleasantly, very much like looking at us. So I am, I am now teaching you some Samatha meditation. So, <laughs> so it's also enjoyable by the way. So, so that person is very present and looking at you, you know, with a smile and, you know, he's being present and you are also wishing him well, wishing may he be well, may he be well. He's also very present. So, you know, yeah, yeah, developing the subha. We are developing the conceptual uh, pleasantness in a way so that we are also happy and the joy arise and you get concentrated. The distractions become less and less in front of the person also quite happy. And now he's with a smile. So you, you can uh, get that, uh, you know, that nimitta, the, the sign. So the, the person ultimately will disappear, but that smile or that, that very pleasant uh, uh, some sort of uh, sign may be now available to you. So you can use that to attain jhana rather than using a person to attain the jhana. You can actually use a very, uh, say, slight sensation or rather sensation. You can say a uh, very slight a sign. So that sign also not a man or woman, but uh, a kind of a glimpse that you have abstracted from that person. Maybe a very present uh, can't say really a human image, but a kind of a sign. Now, say for example, if you do anapanasati, it will get a, typically a bright light. So ultimately, you have to give up anapanasati, drop anapanasati, and you have to be with this light. And this light become more and more brighter. Typically, it become more and more transparent, very bright. And at one point, you get absorbed to it. So similarly here also, in metta, you, at the beginning, you have a person. But later, that person become minimized to a very pleasant uh, figure. And from that, you extract the sign, drop all the other unnecessary things. And that sign become the primary object, or we can say the counterpart sign at this case. And you get absorbed to that. And the beauty of uh, metta related jhana is that you have a very pleasant, uh, more joyful, more lovable kind of an experience. So it's more blissful in a way. And uh, typically from uh, metta, you can attain first, and first, second and third jhana, not the last, the, not the fourth, but first, second and third. So these things are possible. Now, if you want to uh, do what you call vipassana, then you have to emerge from it. And you can, these are very subtle in a way. So you can recognize what are the pleasantness available, these present feelings available, present sensations available, either mentally or physically, throughout your body or in your mind. And you can recognize how they may be varying, changing, and uh, you can recognize there are variations coming up and coming and going. 
rising and changing. So this now we are turning into the Vipassana. Probably you can try that. But actually before even going to Jahana, you can start uh, even recognizing the sensation. Say, uh, what you can do is, uh, say, that person is there, you are again and again directing uh, loving kindness towards that person. And later you let go of that person, but you can direct to yourself. To yourself, what are the sensations available in you now? So what is your mind looks like? What are the kind of uh, feelings available in you? What are the perceptions available in you? Even at that point, you can change into vipassana. That is before you get into absorptions. That's also possible. So even nowadays, there are different techniques available and certain uh, teachers are teaching these kinds of techniques. Uh, recently, one Bhante passed away in the US. Uh, I think. Can't remember his name. Uh, so and these techniques are available. So using metta, you can actually first you develop that uh, the feeling of metta, the perception of metta, and once it's prominently available, you let go of the person and you pay attention to yourself, and you can start now practicing vipassana. Possible possibilities are there. Now uh, in the vipassana, uh, in the, the satipatthana practice, what we do is uh, not much paying attention to metta, rather if you really necessary, you can practice metta for short period. Say for example, uh, you are in a, a kind of a more agitated uh, mood and you have a lot of angry thoughts available in your mind, and immediately coming back to the body and recognizing sensations or doing rising and falling or anapanasati would be difficult. Such situation, you can practice with a bit of metta to overcome that uh, hindrance, the anger, and then to calm you down. So bring back to the middle. So that now you are kind of all right, no anger. Now again, you are quite neutral. Now you can switch to anapanasati if you like, rising and falling if you like. It is more and more in, into the equanimity side. And that's more and more uh, very, you know, uh, natural. Natural in the sense that the anapanasati is not that you create it. The body breathes, naturally available. You don't have to do much. It's not something that artificially created object, but it's a available bodily phenomena, bodily process, very natural. It is not that you breathing, but the body breathes. So the many vipassana aspects are already available there. And even rising and falling. So the whatever the natural characteristics are already available there, so you don't need to create anything. So things are na very natural and available. Phenomena are uh, already there. Therefore, switching uh, to such kind of an experience, such kind of a practice has many benefits. And uh, as I said, so in such situation, metta becomes only a preparatory kind of a meditation. That's why we talk them as the guardian meditations, Chaturarakka Bhavana. So, metta, buddha, nusati, asubha, and uh, marana, nusati. So, just to prepare the mind. That is also depending on the circumstance. Say, if you are in an angry mode, mood, you can practice a little bit of metta to get rid of that. Say, if you are in a more lustful mood, then you can practice a little bit of asubha to come to the middle. And if you don't have much energy, you are feeling a little sad, probably you can practice buddha, nusati to, you know, make yourself happy, energetic, then you can come back to the Anapanasati or the Satipatthana. And if you don't have much energy to practice and you don't have much urge to practice, you can probably practice uh, Marnanusati so that you have some energy, urgency developed so that you start practice. So likewise, depending on the uh, possibility or depending on the situation of your mind, you can make use of these uh, four guardian meditations. But as you are move, progress more and more, you have to give more prominence to the Satipatthana part. So Satipatthana practice is the main theme, the development of the mindfulness, starting with the body awareness, developing body awareness, being with the body, recognizing various body sensations, various body physical processes. So this is where you are grounding yourself, being with yourself, 
that would be more straightforward and the interesting thing is we are very much like uh, is quite uh, reducing the inner chatter very quickly now say for example uh, metta for example so we are using a phrase we are using a verse so again it's a kind of a, a thought related part so as you are developing the concentration and as you getting closer to jahan actually you need to you need to shorten it if you are using a long phrase that will be that will become a hindrance for the further progress of your practice I mean, actually you need to reduce it you need to shorten it and ultimately you have to even stop that you have to let go of that complete phrase but now you can simply see this image or that sign of metta and now with the thinking free mind then you can do the absorption even in metta but in uh, anapanasati so it's that's what we do from the beginning we don't think at all but rather we trying to develop awareness with the breathing so breathing is particularly recommended for people who has too much thinking or vitakka or speculative characters so we have doubts we have thinking we have you know regrets plans and so much of thinking for such characters uh, anapanasati would be a very good antidote so you are developing anapanasati but calming calming down relaxing uh, reducing thinking and ultimately thinking slowly abandon and you are completely with the silent mind you observe each and every uh, in breath and out breath so therefore these are the benefits of both sides you can recognize so so i recommend therefore to you if possible to come to either rising and falling you can select because it's more even straightforward even more than anapanasati you can directly start with rising and falling it's basically grounding you take you to the the begin you know the middle of the body it has less on the other hand it has some you know if you are practicing anapanasati sometimes uh, if you are not properly balancing it there could be a bit of uh, tiredness or maybe uh, say uh, some kind of drowsiness so maybe uh, certain little bit of headache can happen if you put too much effort but later once you uh, balance it there won't be much issues but rising and falling of the other hand it's more gross you can easily recognize it and as a beginner you can practice it and it is later will it will even take you to further to the elements meditation directly but anapanasati as i already mentioned it will take you even to the samatha or even to the vipassana so actually we don't need to think much about it at the beginning i am whether i am practicing anapana or samatha or vipassana rather you need to simply develop mindfulness simply establish mindfulness later you can navigate wherever you want do the whatever the necessary adjustments so these are the things i like to share with you so whoever has written the question if you want to share or if you want to ask more so feel free to participate or otherwise you can continue the person who raised the question yeah so you have any more questions or are you ready to come to advaita <laughs> practice because this is uh, actually further you know that uh, it gives more emphasis to the vipassana actually uh, and it is uh, helpful and uh, developing the awareness omitting or discarding too much thinking and now into a completely different side actually typically what we think is that the thinking is necessary we we are thinking and thinking is our life but uh, we turn to another area okay we can be aware no need to think you can walk without thinking you can eat without thinking <laughs> so it's i mean very much like out of our vocabulary i mean we think okay there there is a very famous uh, phrase by decart right uh uh cognito something i can't remember that uh, latin some phrase so thinking is there so i am here thinking is there so that is why i am so he 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 his uh, his main teaching that like decart is a, a french uh, philosopher a mathematician and many many things are there with him 
so his his main philosophy his main very interesting way of interpreting things is so i think therefore i am <laughs> so thinking is a must for my existence that's a, that is the thing so then in case while walking the thinking stop <laughs> so i have to die <laughs> so it is not in his vocabulary so his definition is that the thinking is something a necess- a essential component of my existence so thinking is there so they are for i exist but it's completely opposite how the buddha is pointing out so even you recognize how i being created because of this thinking and then the thinking you you understand okay is completely some I mean, it doesn't mean that we have to completely prohibit thinking but we can make use of it properly so thinking become a kind of a tool then so as buddha very beautifully mentioned in the takkantana sutta so when it is necessary you can think when it is not necessary you can keep it quiet very beautiful <laughs> yeah thank you bhante for those great explanations uh, this is the question number 4 dear bhante the mind is silent and empty the body form is gone how can i discern whether this is a jnanic state or anidassana vijnana it can last for an hour or less it may it can last for an hour or less mm-hmm. actually i need to a uh, little bit discuss with this uh, person then it's easy because uh, uh, someone can uh, even when they practice anapana sati as a beginner say not really as a beginner but uh, can attain jhana and probably can experience this but on the other hand a, a vipassana yogi also can experience this but in the first case it's more into the more deeper kind of a concentration but the second case going through vipassana it may be very soft gentle uh, say surface level awareness we probably may be experience may i know who has written it okay so which 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 category are you second okay so then of course the the vipassana did so sorry yeah uh, i could give what to say so basically uh, for how long were you practicing from the long time of long time okay so you went through some sort of vipassana related practice it was mostly the vipassana vipassana with bhante dhamma ji or any other okay fine so i mean how you how you are entering this uh, this whatever the concentration uh, before entering it before entering it what are you doing my general so i need to open the veils aha uh-huh. and then uh, most the uh, chitta rasa aha uh-huh. so then are there many thoughts so really you feel thoughts from that time there are thoughts but uh, that, uh, that i uh, was asking you was with the with the long periods there are no thoughts at all no thoughts or no right. feelings so, right know. right at that time where are you keeping your attention when there are no thoughts where are you keeping your attention mm. sorry uh, Uh, sorry on the emptiness on the emptiness okay there is no object no object okay fine so you can stay there for a long time now uh increasing the more long okay okay fine so are you are you get absorbed to that or you can softly maintain it very soft awareness very gentle and very pleasant kind of awareness mm-hmm. are you maintaining okay it's more pleasant than the uh, i don't have to struggle to be there okay fine so while once you are there how how gently are you maintaining it i don't have to put effort i just say okay good fine then then that's that's what we need to do so that's that is that's the thing so actually that is the theme that we are taking into the dhamma sermons also so how to arrive that say signless concentration the or what we call as animitta or the sunyata kind of a state and how to dwell there how to be there with a more effortless way that's why even in yesterday that uh, 
in the Dhamma sermon that Venerable Ananda's question so that Buddha is saying, okay, I'm quite often, I am in, in emptiness. So emptiness become a kind of a, a way of dwelling, way of being. So it is an effortless type of way of being there. It becomes like a de default position. Exactly. So it becomes the norm of the mind, it becomes the default nature of the mind. So at the beginning, it may be difficult, but once you went through the practice and the practice helps you to uh, you know, abandon all the different delusions, ignorant parts, and then the mind is ready to be there, just dwell there. It's more and more a pleasant abiding. So the point is, so now you better use it to recognize defilements. So that is the uh, the opportunity we have to recognize even subtle defilements, how we create a self, how we create a person, uh, if there any kind of a comparison happen. Uh, so the recognizing all those uh, very subtle eye making, mind making, and the various measurements, the eye, the conceit. So those are the things that we need to, we can recognize while we are there. So this is going on uh, alienation also. Alienation. Alienation from body and mind. Could be, could be. So that means. Uh, so I'll ask a question like, say, uh, say that the thing, the, assume that you are talking, assume that you are eating. It happens naturally, but you don't need to interrupt the process. Am I correct? The process goes on. Right. But you're depressing of that in the background. Correct. Okay. Fine. Fine. That's the thing. So the processes are possible to carry on. They, they but, carry on without any interruption like this. Normal. Correct. And uh, the right. Right. Correct. Correct. So now, actually, the now the point is the very beautiful balancing. You need to properly balance it. You know that if we if we hard if you pay a very now assume that you close your eyes and sitting and the emptiness happen and if you pay kind of a too much effort, then you might get even absorbed to that. So that is, has to be avoided in a way. On the other hand, if you are not fully aware of it, then mind might slip and get involved with the objects again. These are the two extremes in a way. The science, again, you, science can interrupt. So that is one extreme. You can get absorbed to signlessness. That's another extreme. So it's a kind of a a uh, very balanced uh, uh, maintenance of the signless awareness that would that would be the middle. So we'll discuss these things uh, during the Dhamma sermons. Uh, so he, the one thing is that for you to make use of this practice to recognize the defilements. That is one thing. And how the fluctuations happen in the mind and even a subtle level with your signs happening, appearing sometimes in your mind and certain memories appear in your mind that will indicate what are the still available defilements in you. So those are the representations of the defilements available underneath. And recognizing that and uh, simply letting it go further weaken those tendencies in the mind. And when they, when they do so, do you ignore them or do you let them pass or do you have to do uh, so much that I uh, All are all right. <laughs> It depends on depends on the situation. So many possibilities are there. That's why in the in the Dhamma Anupassana, Buddha recommends Anicca Anupassi, Viraga Anupassi, Nirodha Anupassi, Patnisagga Anupassi. So all are different methods. So it, whatever appealing to you at that moment. So if you feel that it's, you can see quickly how they come and go. In a way, you are looking at the changing property. If you simply have kind of a dispassion towards it, I don't want to much worry about it, then kind of a Viraga Anupassi. Then uh, once it's gone, you simply rest on the cessation, cessation in the sense the absence. So we can say fairly into the Nirodha Anupassi. On the other hand, say you see this phenomena coming and uh, you let go of it, but revert back yourself to the emptiness, then we can say into the Patanisaga Anupassi. So many options are there in the practice. So make use of any of those. So I just referred Anapana Satisutta, the last uh, section of the Manupasana. <clears throat> so the 
it has 16 steps. The last six, four steps, I have just pointed it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Bhante. Uh, this is the question number five. Dear Bhante, are all mental proliferations uh, reflected to the body? In other words, can the body be used to gauge what happens in both body and mind? Yeah, this is a very common phrase typically used in the brain to practice. Uh, you know that uh, whatever the emotion, whatever the mental phenomena, could have a conjoined physical, uh, physical maybe a indication, physical connection, and probably you can come back to the physical sensation. And if you observe that, even definitely the mental thing could go away. Definitely available. Or say, for example, if you are angry, so your heart vibration may be increased, and your 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 face become different. <laughs> <laughs> so obvious. I mean, that's a, good, a very, very obvious connection is there. So, so, so one one method is that rather than looking at directly your mental activity, the whatever thought perceptions, you can come back and be with the body and recognize those sensations. Then, while you are observing those sensations, so the anger definitely disappears because you are not promoting it. Rather, you were paying attention to the bodily sensations. So the so the resultant bodily, sorry, the mental activity completely disappeared because you are not strengthening it. But in the, in the Satipatthana, but the other part is also available. So that's why, uh, you know, we don't need to restrict ourselves to uh, Kaya Nupasana and Vedana Nupasana. Possibility is still there to look at the mind. You can look at, look at anger as anger. You can look at lust as lust. So it's beautifully explained. Saragan chittan, saragan chittan di pajana. Sado san chittan, sado san chittan di pajana. So basically, as we are moving forward, so this skill become available to us. Now you can watch it. Now you can recognize how anger arises, how lust arises. All these things are, you know, very, very obvious, evident. So then, I mean, no need to go to the body. Even though there is a direct link, no need to go. You can just be, simply look at in the mental domain, mental environment. You can work it out. So, so that's why the four fatipatthanas are there, four foundations are there. So when you are practicing further and further, all are available to you. All streams are available. You can play in any stream. Thank you, Bhante. Dear Bhante, this is uh, question number six. Dear Bhante, can you please explain how to practice Yonso Mansukara in daily life? And what is the difference between Yonso Mansukara and Satisampajan? Thank you with deep gratitude for the teaching. Much better. Yonso Mansukara and Satisampajan. A very close relation is there, by the way. Because uh, now, mere mindfulness, you can simply say, okay, you are in the present moment. You aware of what's going on, uh, not distracted, you are present. But uh, clear comprehension come to the picture, introduce certain amount of wisdom attached to it. Now, not only you are aware, but you, you are examining. You are, you, are, you are a certain amount of penetrative, penetrativeness of the mind. So you are, you are examining, you, you has given certain attention, not simply surface touch, rather you are trying to penetrate. Same thing in the Yonuso Manasikara. The Yonuso Manasikara also are going to the source, are going to the root, so that, that attribute of the mind. So the mind has the skill to go to the bottom, to the root, to the source, rather than simply superficially being in the top. So therefore, a close relationship is there. So you, I feel that uh, you can't do Yonuso Manasikara without a proper mindfulness and clear comprehension. So it becomes kind of a prerequisite for you to properly do a Yoniso Manasikara. Because uh, in one sense, you are doing at the present moment. If you are to practice Yoniso Manasikara at the present moment, you have to have mindfulness. 
then you have to clearly see the picture, clear comprehension. So that, of course, is the Yonso Mansikara. Now you are looking the deeper, trying to find out the causes, reasons, sources. So a good relationship is there. Thank you, Bhante. This is question seven. Dear Vindabal Bhante, I'm a beginner to meditation. Recently, I read a book about meditation practice to get Samadhi. It said when the mind, mind gets calmer, it will, it will dispense with akka. With, uh, sorry, I'll read it again. It said when the mind gets calmer, it will dispense with akka, vichara and rapture. Can you please explain the meaning of the words? Bohumapin metta I can explain takka, vichara, piti, but I can't remember the exact meaning dispense. To abandon? Yes, or? Abandon, dispensing, abandon. Abandon, no? Do away with it. Hmm. Yeah. That tamas, that actually do at a later stage. <laughs> so you can't immediately get rid of abandon the vitakka vichara piti. So vitakka no, vichara. No, yeah. sorry, hmm. This word could be even disperse, but it will be the same meaning. Hmm. Uh, disperse or dispense. Uh, I think by similar way, meaning. By the way. So I'll, I'll give you a different explanation here, not other than different explanation, a different viewpoint. And I'll say development of Samadhi. So development of Samadhi in one sense, we can say development of five jhana factors. So five uh, con concentration factors. On the other hand, abandoning the five hindrances. So these two has to happen very much in the parallel. So Vitakka. Vitakka is again and again, we are paying attention to a given object, say breathing, for example, again and again, you are paying attention to in-breath, again and again, you are paying attention to out-breath. So when you are doing it again and again, continuously, the breathing happens continuously. So you can't take a break. You can't, your mind, if it is actively doing it, you can't fall asleep because it happens quickly. So you have to have this quickness. So the, the vitakka, once it is strengthened, it actually checks the you know, the, the Swatthan Topper. So Swatthan Topper can't arise when you have active Vitakka. Actively you are engaging yourself, putting your mind again and again, applying your mind again and again to a particular object. So the Tina Midda is suppressed, Tina Midda is abandoned because of the strengthened Vitakka. On the other hand, now say, not only you apply your mind, now you closely examine what, what you have applied you have applied your mind to the thought or rather the, the breath and now you close the examine. So the, now you are very sure, okay, this is in-breath. I am not uh, doubtful about it. It's not out-breath, it is in-breath. So you are sure about it. So assurance, your, your, your confidence is promoted because of the vichara. You do a close examination. You do a little bit of examination. So that is the vichara, the sustained attention. Once it is there, it will dispel doubt, which is So when you are knowing, okay, this is right, this is the left, so that is very sure about it. When you know exactly this is in breath, this is out breath, you are very sure about it. So the doubt has no opportunity at this level. So doubt is abandoned because of which are. <coughs> and then assume now you are getting much better and you again and again put your attention, you do the examination, and now things are getting better and you feel a little happy about it now. You are, you know, putting yourself into the track. You're being a little happy, a little joy arise. You are being successful, joy arise. So the happiness in that level, the joy in that level, the rupture in that level is completely opposite to the anger, ill will. So when very present, happy, uh, rapturous, uh, environment is there in your mind, it will avoid any kind of ill will. Ill will is abandoned. And then your, your body feels comfortable, and your mind feels comfortable. You know that the comfort, happiness, you feel the sukha. So the sukha, when, when internal happiness is there, you, so you, you, don't have, you don't need to worry about what has happened in the past. You don't need to regret. So the mind doesn't want to become regret or restless even. That's why the Uddacha Kukkucha, so that hindrance will be avoided when you have a very present abiding within yourself. So the happiness is there. 
so why we why our mind get distracted is because it can't be happy internally it's now find, trying to find out happiness from external now already inside internally you have happiness contentment a joy everything so mind doesn't want to wander because internally happiness is available so the restlessness and regret is abandoned when you have sukha happiness and now this uh, concentration is obvious in a way because mind will naturally get concentrated sukhino chittang samadhyati so the body is happy present mind is also very present happy so it's a kind of a natural concentration development we don't need to do much to concentrate rather all the necessary ingredients are available factors are available so the mind naturally get concentrated so that is that ekangata is completely opposite to kama chanda you know the kama chanda the sensual desire is an indication that we have a jumping nature of the mind it can't stay one pointed it can't stay in the object it will look for something else look for something else look for something else but now mind remains one pointed in whatever the selected object in breath and out breath that means ekagrata is there ekagrata will avoid any kind of karma chat so we have developed this whatever we call the concentration factor samadhi anga vitakka vichara piti sukha ekagrata each and every one will take care of the other respective hindrances so then the mind is concentrated that <laughs> so basically so this is the kind of development of the samadhi in a way so depending on what depth you are going on we define it okay this is first jhana the second jhana third jhana fourth jhana likewise but the techniques is very much the similar later you may understand okay we talk about vichara maybe this will gross you dropping it even then the pt is it will gross you drop it even the sukha is gross you drop it you attain different jhana so this is the technical things so by the way so rather than thinking okay i immediately have to avoid vitakka so make use of vitakka so that you can get a lot of benefits through that yeah. thank you banthi this is question a last in english uh, dear banthi can you share how you have improved the practice and got into the current state <laughs> so starting from a professional life as an engineer it will be a great example for all young people maybe even for all the people <laughs> i just added that <laughs> so that's why i mentioned when i started my mind was utterly distracted because as engineers uh, our, our minds are fully corrupted <laughs> i need to admit that and too much thinking too much logical thinking too much analyzing and i was in the software side jimita you know how we worked hard and taking going through a lot of uh, responsibilities and uh, at the same time i had many uh, say family issues my mother was not well she was going to parkinson so many many issues were there and once she passed away then i became a monk so all the rot was still available on the mind <laughs> i mean at the beginning it's like a hell i mean very very difficult Uh, but the, at that moment my major you know uh, strength was i had a lot of faith in the buddha so the teaching i have a lot of faith so this is definitely can be done so i believe that even though i can't even though my mind is completely distracted i believe it is possible so that that assurance even though i don't have it i couldn't even taste it i i feel it's possible so that kind of a confidence having a strong faith with the buddha and not giving up not giving up so so at, actually in uh, in uh, actually i ordained in navina monastery so at that time uh, we start they started uh, uh, what you call uh, silent meditation retreat so in the in the upper monastery area so i get enrolled with that and they are practicing more into the samatha meditation so did all the different sorts of meditations and in a way it's very difficult for me because you know for us would be vipassana might be little easier but we have to do the samatha that is even difficult you know keeping my attention on breathing they don't talk about the rising and falling directly go to the breathing anapanasati 
or practice various other samatha practices very very difficult but didn't give up <laughs> so that's the strength i felt i didn't give up i believe it's possible so therefore that's what i i am i am uh, kind of confident you can do it that's the main thing is that the faith you need a lot of faith in the buddha's teaching so it is possible that 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 assurance even though i can't do it right now it's still possible because i couldn't do it because i had other affairs so that's the point with you also i had legit many other responsibilities when you have affairs you couldn't spend much time in the practice so that's why you can't do it right now but if you spend some time more time definitely is possible that's the point there are no secrets it's a matter of training yourself again and again getting involved with it bahavita bahudi kata that's why i mean it's a matter of doing it having confidence having the faith with the buddha's teaching and not giving up i mean i have gone through 100 and 1000 i mean 1001 obstacles whatever the mistake you do i have got i have done that <laughs> many many mistakes i can remember I, even several days i couldn't sleep when i started the anapanasati too much effort <laughs> too much effort several days i couldn't sleep it was again and again i was trying hard to keep attention on the nostril in breath out breath in breath out breath my goodness i couldn't sleep many days and as i vante dhamma ji used to say even though you do anapana sati try to breathe <laughs> <laughs> because because as beginners sometimes we have we are too enthusiastic i want to become enlightened quickly <laughs> and on the other hand we have a lot of conceit also you know others are you know they are, they don't know much i am the i am the guy <laughs> so that is also another hindrance that's why i mean once we are educated sometimes uh, we are being differently fooled ourselves that's why sometimes we overestimate ourselves we think okay i am an educated guy i am an engineer i am a doctor so definitely i should be able to do it quickly than the other typical upasakamma definitely i can do it that is where we sometimes go wrong <clears throat> because uh, so different skill actually we are talking here because in the typical educated system and typical our way of uh, say engineering or whatever the thing we gather a lot of knowledge we learn we uh, say analyze and we store a lot of information in our mind and with that we do further thinking 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 analysis analysis imaginations designing mental you know a huge work a tremendous amount of load to the mind but here complete relaxing complete opposite it's a complete 180 degree how to turn <laughs> without now think of something like this now say even without the thought but having a penetrative look to something now say for example so i'm uh, i can i assume say i have to look at it so you can write an essay about it you can talk in many different ways and you can add so much of information to that and you can write an essay that's one side but you can simply watch it with the side and mind but with a kind of a penetrative penetrative look kind of a searching kind of examining investigating so that's why in the vipassana in the when we are talking about the dhamma vichaya one aspect is to have that uh, silent awareness with a penetrative kind of a look it is not thinking so the buddha's teaching actually help us to go beyond thinking in that sense so typically we nowadays we are into too much thinking whole education system and our whatever the way of life into too much thinking so we get sick because of thinking because of conceptual proliferation we are dealing with too much of concepts so concepts has become overwhelming nowadays now if you consider in the past so we didn't have too much of this much of information i mean not this much of labels this much of names terminologies so many things are there now our lives become very complicated very confusing too much information 
so that's why i mean we have to uh, struggle a lot than a previous person who been in the human realm for 100 years ago or something 200 years ago nowadays actually we are into a entirely different side we are we are too much loaded with lot of information now it's we have to unload it <laughs> lot of garbage is there you have to unload it so the point is i mean if if we are not uh, humble enough to accept that we think okay i i can go to i can cross to the other show with all load of information isn't it as i i, I used the yesterday's uh, dhammapada verse sincha bikku imang na sitta me lahu mesati so with the with the you were very interesting simile now say you want to cross to a assume that you want to cross a river and uh, you are given a boat and you put so much of things to that say many many things you are loading 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 almost you you can survive without getting immersed now you are throwing your boat and trying to cross to the other shore now buddha come and say now son you got to ring all this unnecessary stuff so when it is lighter it become more is easier for you to cross to the other show sitta me lahu mesati so once you unload the things so your mind become relax calm quiet then you can easily cross to the other show that's why that's why i mean it is not that uh, whatever the intelligence we have to be abandoned rather the intelligence will be useful but from a different perspective different way of using it with a very kind of a silent mind not a thinking mind not a proliferating mind but with a silent mind still a kind of a intelligence is available to each one of us that is something that we are being gifted as human beings that is available to us that is what buddha is in a way harnessing buddha is using use encouraging and uh, that is what the interesting part of being a human being and then he will doing as he said <laughs> yeah thank you bhante thank you for sharing all that with me uh, this is the last question it is in singular so i will have to read it as it is first garukara swamin mahansa paryank bhavana patimat satyagata pasu paryanke di kalaya anduru palu tatve sukem ुहमयाचारे <laughs> <laughs> आश्रव सिटिंग <laughs> मेडिटेशन <laughs> after reasonably mindful sitting experience i arrived at a dark empty state when i asked venerable dhamma ji he said let us proceed like that uh, i was wondering whether i am stuck in a, a rupa world means uh, form based kam lok uh, not the common external do have form based worlds form realms arupa uh, formless realms uh, that is that uh, thinking this person is thinking with i am stuck 
in the form that is our our realm is karma realm. The rupa and arupa are the other worlds. Namut in Eliyata Pemina, Aloko, Takashek, and everything. However, I came out of that and stopped in a bright space. Thereafter, I entered an empty space. However, uh, for, a, uh, for a short while, uh, I am getting so many perceptions, it becomes a spaghetti junction. That is the Acharya. <laughs> uh, Namata Andurubhaji Akashi. Again, the space and the other perceptions arise. Uh, after listening to your Dhamma talk yesterday, I'm asked, I'm questioning whether this these things happen due to defilements. Yeah, we can say yeah. yes, it is due to defilements. We will go on after one. Up a win pull on to go on to think of a bohom prisutana kadaga trapasse, a kind of a pursuit when they think a lesson satama. The term may pursue the baba then up here, but take a cooling katakare, a kind of a bit of head in a while, some of the Akala, Pasana Kadala, put a say in the pursuit bavak hit a tenena. उपकल्पने फाइट उपकल्पनावरदी हर Yeah, there are two more questions. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Bante. Uh, before coming here, I have been joining Dhamma discussions and listening to Sutta discourses. Uh, in addition, I have always sought uh, advice, Kamatahan advice. Uh, advice. That's the second question part. Mm -hmm. Third one is. Yeah, go ahead. Third one is. Little bit unrelated. Uh, uh, can can a lay practitioner dispel uh, uh, sensual defilements, defilements of being, and defilements of ignorance uh, while being a lay person? Yeah. Actually, um, rather than giving a short answer, this is a very interesting area. <clears throat> so, what Buddha has given as a role model? For lay people, who 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 is the? Oh, ekra mai. Ha, ne. Akka mane, mata mata kai. Ekam dega api api gihion machine khawud budrayan naan se api adar shi tegan ne kiu. Ne. Inge ha. Ne. Nandu mata. नंदमाता 
ඔක්කොම <laughs> 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 So the problem is, the question is related to uh, whether one can attain, uh, abandon the lust and hatred as a layman. Actually for lay people, Buddha has given certain examples, certain role models. So what, who, who I have to be kept as my role model, as a Dhamma follower. So there are, during the Buddha's time, there are a few such uh, very uh, ex exemplary characters. So the, for women, Buddha has given one interesting role model, he is called Velu Kantaki Nandamata. And for the, I will take just one. And for the men, Buddha has kept uh, Chitta Gruhapati as the householder Chitta as the role model. So I'll take one example here, Velu Kantaki Nandamata, very, very interesting sutta. They are called Nandamata Sutta. Uh, so it's a very beautiful story. Uh, one time, actually, uh, this this Nandamata, you know, is a actually Nandamata. The term comes because she is the mother of Nanda. <laughs> Nanda is the son, Mata is the mother. So that's why she is being recognized as Nandamata. And she was living in Vedukantaki, the area. And the uh, interesting thing is, she, is, she can remember the whole verses available in the Parayana Vagra. Parayana Vagra is a very beautiful collection of a very profound Dhamma, very brief profound Dhamma available in the Suttani Pata. And she can remember everything by heart. And at night, she was very beautifully reciting there. And even sometimes, I mean, these are the early teachings of the Buddha. So before even probably he established the huge Sangha Sasana, so he was teaching and uh, directly many talented people are coming and directly he is exposing the teaching and they become enlightened. And in the particular in the Suttani Pata, directly the taken uh, goal is the Arhanship. Not Sautapanna, Sakadagami, Anagami, but directly the Arhanship. So likewise, the excellent teachings are there in the Suttani Pata. And when, even among them, this uh, Parayana Vagga is the extreme, excellent ones. So this Nandamata, how capable she is, she learned that and she's reciting that during the night, very beautifully. At the end of the recitation, someone has say sadhu sadhu and she, he really was happy by hearing it. And then Nandamata is asking who is here. <laughs> then he say, I am Vesavane. Who is Vesavane? Yeah. So Vesavane, according to the Buddhist tradition, there are four guardian deities, and the one king of that is called the Vesavana. Vaisravana Divya Raja, the Vesavana, the king among the four guardian, uh, the, the devotees, deities. So then she's in a way impressed about he being there. And uh, then he's saying that I am quite happy, I'm quite impressed how you recited it. Uh, I, I respect to you. And you know that uh, as a kind of a gift, you know that tomorrow, when will Sariputta and when will Moggallana is arriving, Velukantaki, nobody knows. They are coming with many monks. Probably you can prepare the food for them. <laughs> so it's a little gift that they are giving, he is giving. And then he vanished. Then this uh, Nandamata was quite happy and she prepared the food for next day and then sent a message, message to once they arrived, they all come to house, this uh, uh, Venable Sariputta, Venable uh, this Mongalana and the Sangha arrived there and she offered dana. And after that, after the dana is done. So now Venable Sariputta is asking the question, how do you know that uh, we are coming here? 
and then nandavata is telling so i was told by the king yesavana really <laughs> so i was surprised i mean it's really amazing that uh, even this king the king of the one of the gods actually they are like uh, you know a companion of you are talking to you like that very friendly it's really amazing so he was telling like that into sariputta then nandavata is telling panta it is not the only amazing thing i have there are so many other things <laughs> then she is telling one by one by one she is telling panta now you know that uh, my my young son only son nand possibly taken to the custody at that time i was not being shaken and then he been tortured i was not being shaken then the king has killed him i was not being shaken can take the extreme levels the same set up right you know even today things like that happen but you know those days also similar things have happened but this lady nicely went through it without being shaken now she is explaining it to enbar sariputta and enbar sariputta was quite amazed by that and he is telling really that's really amazing and then he further mentioned one day i was uh, married at young age to a person and from that that young age after my marriage i didn't have any thought about another man so no point of talking about getting being with another person but i didn't have even a single thought thinking about another man to be with another man so this is another thing i am finding out in myself you can see the loyalty the kind of a the uh, in a way the trust and all that so that is there and then further she said in some something more this my uh, my husband later died and he was born as a, a kind of a devil in a, in a demon kind of a thing uh, in the yakka as the proper term for that a kind of a spirit or something so now still he come from that very you know dangerous type of uh, figure he sometimes come in front of me but still i am not getting afraid i can still withstand that still i can handle it i am not getting afraid so these are few two few more things that she is explaining and uh, something more uh, and further he she is telling uh, now one thing is related to the mother sorry son's passing away second thing is related to uh, her, her 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 kind of truthful or rather loyalty what available with her the third thing is related to when the the husband passed away how she is being not afraid and further she is mentioning when i am looking at my mind now i don't feel i don't recognize any kind of five defilements in the five law of fetters five law of fetters or ambhagni sangat i don't i don't notice it so then actually further sariputta when the sariputta was quite happy about it and uh, he is praising her so basically these are exemplary kind of characters so explained in the dhamma very beautifully recorded and buddha use her as the role model for lay women you can see i mean these are possible things these are very you know very practical things and they they are not merely going through a very you know uh, pleasant way of life but they have gone through a lot of ups and downs on the son being killed and the husband being passed away and now appearing from a, as a spirit quite kind of disturbing but still she is managing it going through it so these are the areas actually we can see even these kind of extreme situations she is handling it properly and some similar thing has happened into the bandhu mallika when her husband being killed and 32 sons being killed but still she is simply managing herself because the lust is abandoned the anger is abandoned the two the the main prominent uh, fetters being abandoned kamaraga patita being abandoned now there is no anger rising no lust rising but still a lay person chitta guhapati also same a lay person but non written so they are i mean that's why the sasana was there <laughs> 
So this, the capacity was there. So that's why Buddha giving them as the role model. Okay, these are the role model for you. These are the role model for you. Very beautifully, Buddha is taking those points, highlighting them, and giving. Okay, these are the role models. So therefore, the possibility is there. So it's a matter of practicing it. So understanding the requirements, abandoning it, and uh, you know the potential is explained in the Dharma. So ask us to use those as the potential. I ask us to use them as the role models, rather than rather than uh, say. Uh, kind of uh, uh, discouraging ourselves. It's expectation, the invitation is to encourage ourselves, okay, these are the role models, okay, let me try that. That's the direction that Buddha is pointing us. Yeah. Okay, I think the time passed. <laughs> so we'll wind up the session, otherwise we'll go, go on and on. <laughs> So we'll wind up the session here. Thank you very much for your attentive listening. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it tomorrow. We'll take it tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. We'll take it tomorrow. Uh, Otherwise, so tomorrow. Your question will be taken up tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Everyone, sunlight. <laughs>